Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now today we're going to be looking at how I build um, this really cool, in my opinion, M41 Walker Bulldog or any kind of tank and if you choose to do so, whatever kind of tank you want, through some rubble or debris. You can even do it through mud if you wanted to, just not adding the bricks. So what we're going to do here in my case is we're going to take our M41 Walker Bulldog tank, it's a US tank, built by Tamiya. It um, goes for around uh, like $30, depending on where you get it. I got mine on sale, so it was only around $20. That was nice. And then you're also going to want to cut open the packaging, as you always do. Now inside the kit, what you'll find are all the parts to complete the finished model on the box. Very detailed parts, right straight out of the box. You can see a lot of detailed mold lines, various um, fixtures on there. We've got those nice rubber treads. This is a bit more of a beginner's kit, easy kit. So they're rubber treads, unfortunately. But those will work okay for what we're doing. There's the turret there, I just pulled that away. And then here we have the three minifigures that are included with this set. A tank commander and two ground infantry people. Um, everything is in these nice plastic bags. There was a bomb of the tank half so that nothing gets scratched, beat up, or torn, you know. The one thing I was surprised about was that the decals, at, or sorry, the instruction manual comes came with three instruction manuals. One English one, um, a tech tip sheet. I never really use those. This tells you what to, like, what to expect. And then we also have the Chinese or Japanese or Korean, I don't know what language that is, sheet. Now when I first started assembling the model, I began building the interior, um, although there is no interior, it's just the basic um, the frame, sort of. And you see the, um, the little suspension where the wheels attach to the actual bottom of the chassis are already molded in. I also, one thing I want to note is that all of the, the glue I'm using in this video is Mr. what was it called? Mr. Cement SP. Uh, great glue, great liquid cement. I find I also use Tammy Extra Thin Glue, although I don't know if I have that on camera. I just use those for some of the smaller parts. Um, I find that the liquid cement from Mr. SP um, actually grips better and it holds the parts together more firmly and it's a little bit of a stronger glue than Tamiya liquid cement. So that's what I used on the most of the model instead of a few smaller pieces. The tank also includes right out of the box a lot of small details as in the front or I think I believe that's the back actually. It includes a lot of hooks and things like that. Now I then begin work on the turret, I mean the gun barrel, sorry. Um, there was a little bit of flash on there that we can just remove down with sanding. I'll show you how to do that later on the video. And the two pieces of the halves of the gun barrel pretty much just slotted right together. No issues with that. Had to add a little bit of extra glue on there just to make sure that they stood firm, not stood, held together firmly. But overall it was a very nice fit. Now back onto the top of the turret. So we got here, we got a few of the hatches, we got the gunner's periscope, I believe that's what that is, and we also have the commander's periscope that's right up top by the commander's hatch. There we go right there. Um, you'll see I use that um, Mr. SP cement on that one because they tend to fall off easily. And we also got these two antennas. Now I made the mistake of adding these on a little bit early. I mean they're in the right places and everything but the thing is that they tended to break off pretty easily so I would recommend adding them on later in the build depending on how you're going to paint it and how careful you are. I'm not that gentle. I mean I'm gentle enough but I'm not exactly the most gentle person when it comes to handling model kits, especially when I'm adding smaller details with pairs of tweezers and I'm trying to film at the same time and it can get a bit messy. Now the kit includes an opening and closing hatch for the commander, but unfortunately I ended up breaking one of the ends of the um, hinges, so I just had to glue it open. You could also glue you also I also could have had I also could have had to glue it shut glue it shut. But um, as I was going to use the figures, I decided to leave it open. Now I also add the small little handles on the sidebar, on the side of the tank, turret. 
Um, again, I sh probably should have added these small details on later on the build, as I accidentally broke two of them off, I believe. After the fact, and they rolled off into the carpets on the back of my desk, and I never found them again. And um, that's kind of unfortunate. Um, next we're going to add the jerry cans, or whatever they're called, gas cans. And there's one on the other side, too. The la one of the last steps to assembling the turret was just to plop in that little back piece on the back and add a few of these little hooks. Now these hooks, I'm going to believe they're for adding stowage on the side, as I will not be doing that. I'm not going to add a rope. So what would happen is those little hooks, there's one in the front and there's one in the back. I just added the back one a minute ago and I'm adding the front one now. But I believe what you do is you tie a rope in between those two hooks and they would hold their stowage right in the middle there. There's, one the, there's two hooks, basically identical on the other side. Now, what I also went ahead and did, as soon as the glue was dry, I also sanded the gun barrel, as there will be no weld seams on them in real life, on the real tank, um, with just some 1,000 grit sandpaper. I probably could have used like 800 or 600 grit. I wouldn't go lower than that. But I just didn't want to leave any deep gashes in the plastic. And I didn't want to mess any details up. Although it did take a bit longer to sand with the 1000, I think it was worth it in the end. There was a bit of flash right there in between the, at the end of the gun barrel that I didn't want to remove with the sandpaper as I could accidentally um, mess up some of the little details up there. So I just removed it with my knife. Now onto the gun turret assembly um, piece that holds in the gun barrel. This is really just basically slotted together. It wasn't very hard at all. I attached the gun barrel, added a bit of cement in there just to make sure that it wouldn't move, fall out or anything like that. And then I just plopped it inside the tank. Sorry. What's nice about this tank is it has the movable gun turret. That means it can either raise, be raised up or down. And then the whole turret can move left and right, which is kind of nice for display value or things like that. If you want to move it around, depending on where you're having it displayed, if you want to have it towards you or away from you, depending up or, up or down. Um, they, basically, they basically just slot together those two ends of the turret and I didn't really have to use that much cement because they pretty much slotted together. Oh, there's the finished turret. came out very nice. I'm pretty pleased with it, although you can see there's a little bit of glue residue on the top and on, along the sides. But there's one little seam right there that I'm going to go ahead and sand. So what I did was I took my hobby knife, just removed that little bit of where it was cut off the sprue. And then I again sanded it with 1000 grit sandpaper because in real life these two halves of the body or the turret would be molded together and there would no, not be a weld seam. There are weld seams running vertically when the, when the um, turret is on the ground and but there are no weld seams running horizontal. So I just removed those lines to make it more accurate and also to get rid of that little bit of flash that was still on there from after the I had removed it from the sprue. Now, I was really surprised this is a Tamiya kit. As usual, they don't have very much flash, but I honestly didn't have to do that much sanding. That was pretty much the only thing I had to do. Um, all I also had to remove the little res glue residue, but that was my fault. If you're a very clean gluer, I'm not sure if that's a word, but if you're a very clean, like when you put on glue, you shouldn't have to do this. Um, it was a very clean kit. Also, um, parts came easily from the end of the sprues. I only had to use my little cutters for the getting rid of the ladders, the little hooks, and a few of the pieces on the turret because they are quite small. Next up is the machine gun assembly. That was very easy again. Basically, it's just like three parts. You got the little ammo box, the ammo box case thing. That's the thing I'm gluing on right now, and the main machine gun part. I'll just be finding. I'll just be painting that flat black, and the ammo box I'll be painting like a lighter green. Next onto the front of the tank, I have those little nice headlights. And there is also a little protective bar that goes all over those so they don't get damaged or anything. In real life, not for the model. You don't, I don't think you'll be damaging your models that bad unless you're like actually playing with them. But there's your protective casing that goes around the headlights to protect them from being smashed or anything like that. The kit also includes a little storage container thing that has a little shovel, a pickaxe. I'm not sure if it's a pickaxe. I think it's a long wrench and like a jack or something like that. Um, nice to include. Very crisp details, honestly. I didn't have to do much sanding over there either. And there weren't any of those mold little peg lines where the 
molds were in, like, added into the, what's it called, the molds. When they pour the plastic in, there's sometimes little circles on the end. I didn't have that anywhere on the model except on the turret. The little commander's hatch interior in there. Uh, and I have lots of wheels, so road wheels, I just glued those with the cement. They're pretty straightforward. All they got, They're basically just three pieces. One of them is rubber. There's a little rubber gasket that goes in between the two wheels whenever you put them together. So you just plop the two ends of the road wheels on top of that little rubber gasket. But basically everything else is straightforward. I had to add a little bit extra glue onto the little sprockets just because they were a little difficult to keep together on my particular model. They might be different on yours, but they didn't really hold together very firmly. And then I also have those little top wheels, I'm not sure what they're called, but they just roll, basically roll on the top so the tank treads don't just sag down all over the place. Basically they're just rollers. So there are all the finished wheels. I got the road wheels and the sprockets. So what I ended up doing, um, this is completely optional. I just wanted to add a little weight to my tank just to make it seem like it was more of a heavy, make it seem more realistic in my opinion. Um, just add some weight into it so you could pick it up. It felt beefy, felt like there was actually something in there instead of just being an empty hull. Now, I did make a slight mistake of using hot glue, um, although I ended up fixing it. So one of the things that happened was when I add the hot glue, if you're an experienced model, you probably already know this, but I suspected it in the first place, but um, it ended up kind of warping the plastic on the bottom. Now, you can prevent this. I've learned by um, just putting it in cold water as soon as, the, as soon as you add the hot glue, and that pretty much prevents the bowing on the plastic from happening where the, it starts to melt it. This plastic was luckily pretty rigid, though. It's thick anyway, um, so it pretty much prevented that from happening too badly because it takes a while to melt thicker plastic and also it's a tank so things would probably be dented in real life so I was okay with that it's really not that noticeable either so I think it all worked out in the end um the main f the top of the what's it called the chassis bolts onto the bottom half really easily um I tried using this liquid cement but it ended up not holding I about as good as I wanted to pretty much although it is going to be covered up by the tracks that little seam there I decided to end up using some super glue because I just wanted it to be a nice firm hold and the liquid cement kind of just went right through the gaps and seeped into the other side so it didn't end up actually doing anything and I was kind of lazy to fill in the gap with some putty and I was like I mean it's going to be covered up by the treads anyway the wheels and stuff will have mud texture so I was just like, I'll, I'll just use some super glue, even if it does leave quite a bit of a residue on there, it'll be okay. So that's what I ended up doing. Held it for a few seconds and everything worked out great in the end. Now there is the finished chassis part, whatever it's called. And the turret, really easy, just plops right in there, two little notches. You just slide into those notches and turn it, and it's all ready to go. There's the movable up and down feature. Now what I did here is, I highly recommend doing this, it's where I just took some black paint, it's called pre-shading. So what I did was, inside the middle of the panel lines, along where the weld seems to be, anywhere basically, I just added these random little squiggles of the black paint, so that whenever we paint our real coat over it, it'll um, add some depth to the real paint, add it, make it look more realistic, instead of just having it a black, or a uniform greenish color over the top. Um, I just added some little pe um, black spots in there so that it'll make it look more diverse, not like any out-of-the-box model kit. It adds a little touch of your own to it. It also makes it look more much much more realistic, in my opinion. Add that to the turret along the edges, especially around areas that would be most shaded, like along the areas around the um, turret, the bottom half of the turret, along where the tank treads would be, by the commander's hatch, where everything would be, so that the details just pop up after we are done painting it. The next color I use is a mixture of olive green, this is the main color, olive green and I believe it was some yellow. I don't actually know the exact mixing ratio, um, although I'm probably going to guess 80% olive green and maybe 20% yellow. And then I also added some leveling, thin, le leveling thinner in there as well, just to make it all liquidy so it flows nice to the airbrush. Um, I, I used all Vallejo colors, if you're wondering. Those Model Air Vallejo colors. Um, they're nice enough. 
Um, I don't have any Tamiya, and I don't really want like spraying lacquer paints in my room, because even with an airbrush booth, it does smell pretty bad. And also, it's a little bit harder to clean the airbrush Tamiya paints or lacquer paints, even though they do come out much better. I just like to use water-based colors, just for my ease, and also the smell is pretty bad. So what I do is I'm only going to do a lighter coat, see there are random black splotches in there, that's perfectly okay, it makes it look more realistic, and plus we're also going to be adding some lighter colors on top of that, so that'll be okay. Those will all be covered up, if you don't like those, don't add the black paint underneath it, and also you can do heavier coats. And also don't forget to paint the wheels, they almost forgot to do this, and it would have been bad because I would have had to mix a whole other batch of paint and things. Just make sure you paint the wheels the same color, it doesn't matter, it, has, it doesn't have to be that great because you're going to end up putting mud textures all over those but just enough that you can actually tell that the color was there and you actually attempted to paint them. Also, don't forget to save the extra paint because we'll be using that later. And our next step, which is about like five seconds, don't just put in a plastic jar or whatever you're gonna do. But the reason we're saved that paint is that the next day I came back and I added some more yellow to it to make it even lighter color. I'd probably say I was around 40% yellow now and 60% olive green after that was all done. And I also added a few drops of white in there too, so it'd be it is a hard ratio, but you can just do it until it looks to your taste basically. I um, made basically just a lighter color to simulate a weird worn or like faded paint on there just to give it more diversity and make it look like this tank is actually used instead of just something straight out of the factory. Um, you'll notice, you know, you can make sure you thin the airbrush paint a lot and also have a good airbrush. My airbrush isn't that great. It's an old master airbrush. Um, that's why I got a few splotches in the paint job there. But that's perfectly fine if you get those. I, they ended up working out for me fine, just fine. And I was able to get rid of those later on in the weathering process. Now what I did here, I don't, it was kind of a waste of time um, because all this area underneath, oh there's my big hand there, will be covered up with the tank treads and everything. Oh yeah, so what I'm doing here, got my nice little paintbrush there, I just mixed a little um, mixture of dark brown and red and I added a few drops of water in there too, but then I'm just spreading it over the model. Um, a little thicker mixture just to add it look just to make it look like the actual panels on the tank are rusted a little bit just so that it doesn't look more so so uniform and also looks like people are actually using this tank this tank has actually been outside it's been weathered it's an older tank people have actually used it there are dents on it and i also added a little streaking effect with this brush just added a little bit of paint on there and then just struck it streaked it i'm not sure if that's even the word again struck it, streaked it, whatever it's called, down the side of the turret and also along this, um, what are they called? The containers inside the hull, the storage baskets. So there we go, that's with all the whole mother, model, mother, I don't know what I did there, model, um, has been weathered partially. We're gonna add some more weathering later on. But what I'm doing now is just painting the rubber on the outside of the road wheels with this nice dark, I think it's black and gray, it's a mixture of black and gray. You can find it, it's a Vallejo killer model air color and it works very nicely for just that nice rubber color there it is with the finished paint job on that we'll be weathering that later and I also decided to add that same color on the end of the turret I know this isn't really realistic um, for this particular tank but I decided to add it anyway it's my model and I just decided to add a little bit of um, my own touch to it I guess and there we go, that's before I actually end up assembling it. We got that nice little tank model there, the road wheels, the sprockets, the front wheels, and the top little wheels. Now to make our weathering mud wash, we're gonna add some garden soil. It's just any dirt outside. As long as you don't mind digging a hole in your yard, you're good. And then we're just add a little a few drops of water in there, and I'm just gonna mix that up till it has a thick texture with an old paintbrush. Now, um, next what I use is I add some Mod Podge Gloss. You can also use Mod Podge Flat, any kind of glue, water-based glue. We can also add some um, Elmer's glue in there, whatever you want to do. As long as there's not any sparkles or anything in there, if you have one of those Elmer's sparkly glue, whatever they're called. And you're gonna mix, mix it until it has a nice thick texture to it. Um, depending on how much glue you want to use, um, that will add to the drying time. 
and it'll also make it stronger. So I recommend adding about as much glue as I did. I ended up, I ended up adding more glue than water just because I wanted the I don't wanted this mixture to actually stick. And what I've had happen before is that when I spray my water-based gloss coat, as it, as I said before, I like to use water-based. That sometimes if I just add water before, I just used to add water to this mixture. It ended up running when I added my gloss coat on top of it, like the water um, all of a sudden came liquid again and the mud turned into actual mud and it ended up making a whole mess of things. So make sure when you add this, you add some glue in there just to make sure that it, it'll actually stick and it also kind of protects it a little more. Now what I'm doing now, just adding that same mixture over like mainly all the bottom areas in the model and I also added a bit on the top just because this tank is going through rubble in my world um, and it's been used a lot, it hasn't been washed in a while, it's in the middle of the Korean War or something like that and it's just been going through these jungly terrains. And I also added a bit in the back, there'll be more in the back than there would be on the front just because the tank treads will be kind of spinning and there'll be mud flapping up, flapping, flapping, okay flapping, flapping again. Um, getting up on top of those um, rear panel areas. So I'm just using a smaller brush for that. I'm not using that big brush that I was using before just because I don't want to add big globs of mud. Just a tiny little bit of dust just to give a nice effect on there. And you can also add it on top of the turret. I ended up doing a tiny bit there just to show like from the guys getting in the tank, maybe their boots were muddy or something like that when they got in. It also adds a nice little rust effect too. It can also look like rust if you want it to. If you color the paint dark, if you add some black paint in there with the gardening soil and the water and the glue, it can also end up looking like a rust. So that also works well too if you want to add some nice rust effects on like another model. Um, also, now we're time to weather the treads. Um, what I did was I took that same mixture, just plopped it on top of the nice little rubber treads we have there. Uh, the rubber treads aren't ideal for these kind of models if you're going for like a really, really, really realistic, that was a tongue twister there, um, look. But I mean, it's good for what I'm doing because I'm not exactly an experienced model and I don't mind. Like anyone could build this model kit without any problems. And I also make sure to weather the backs of the treads too. And I just flip them over and let them dry for a little while. You can mother the treads a lot depending on how weathered you want them to look. And then there is it, there are the treads after they have been weathered with mud. Now we, we will end up adding some silver paint in there to, re to add some of the texture in there. And now what I'm doing now, I just added up, I ended up assembling all of the road wheels, sprockets, front guider wheels, little top random wheels things onto the tank just so that I could weather them because weathering them each by hand took a little while and plus I wanted to make it look like they were actually on the tank when they were they had gotten muddy and I didn't want to kind of mess them up by adding them the weathering in different places that's why I just plot them on the tank and that makes any sense it probably doesn't what I'm saying right now but if you're building the model and you will probably re understand what I'm saying later on if you actually build this model kit or if you speak my language sort of I also added the spare tread on there and I painted that with the same rust mixture mixture, just to make it look like it was rusty. And now what I'm doing now is it's like a sponge chipping technique where I have some nice little silver paint, gently dab it on our brush and then, or not brush, sorry, it's a ripped up old sponge. You can buy it at Home Depot, a big white sponge, or sorry, yellow sponge, whatever, it's a big sponge. Rip it up with a pair of pliers and use little bits in there to add some rust effects. So I just gently dab it on our big pile of um, silver paint over there on that top of that blue bin with the lid or whatever and then gently dab it on top of the model in various locations like especially whenever it would be used. Now this little nifty thing over here is a, um, I'm not exactly sure what it's called but in real life they would use these to hold the turret, hold the gun barrel down when they would be on long trips or something they just fold that little turret thing up and it would just hold the gun barrel in place make it not as movable around. Um, they would also use that if they were going on a long like trip along the country or something. Oh, now what I'm doing now, I took some of that silver paint and I'm rubbing it along the tracks to simulate the weathered um, track. Now these in real life would be metal, but they'd obviously get dirty over time. So I'm just creating that chipping effect 
by adding a little bit of um, silver color paint and I also add that on to the sprockets and the road wheels or basically anywhere that there would be rust chipping anywhere that there would be paint getting rubbed against by the treads. Now the treads are really easy there's four little pins you gotta plop them together these are little two drops of super glue and they all plop very nicely in there. Um, now I didn't like how much mud texture was on those treads so I ended up just dipping my little brush and paint thinner there um, and removing it. You can also use water or something. Um, just removing it, some of that texture so it wouldn't be as muddy. I think it ended up looking more rusty the way I did it before removing some of it and it was a little over to the top in my opinion. So what we got here we got the, um, the first tread compared to the older tread. Now I, I like the way I did it afterwards. So I also named the guys Sam, Jeffrey, and Lewis. Those are the f two, f three figures included with the set and I added the decals. Decals went on very nicely, although I did have a problem. Even when I added decal solvent on them, there was a still the little clear backing that they use on the number 532 in the back there. You can see that. Um, anywhere that there was a clear backing decal, even when I added lots and lots of decal solvent on there, I left it sit all night, add some more. There, that little clear backing never really went away. And when you look at it in a certain direction, it also looks a little bit shiny. You know what I'm talking about if you've done some of these models where they have those big clear backing decal sheets on the white thing. Um, I think that was mainly my air. I think I should have added a bit more water. But there we go, there's the finished tank with the three figures. Sam, Jeffrey, and Lewis. I named them myself. They're actually not named in the actual kit. Actually, that was a lot of actuals there. Okay, um, I'm not showing you the process of how I painted the figures as I will be doing a video on that in the near future, a few weeks. I'm planning on doing getting some more paint and um, I'll do a video on them then. So the base of our diorama is a some foam XPS insulation foam. You can buy this from Home Depot Lowe's. Comes in these big 4x8 sheets and the thickness I'm using is a half inch piece. Now I'm going to plop my tank on there and I'm going to get a little sharpie, permanent marker, whatever you want. Try not to use a pencil because I can tend to leaving these weird uh, marks in the foam. But I go ahead and make the basic outline how big I want my diorama as a basic guide so when I go ahead and cut it, the foam, then there won't be these weird, um, I won't like mess it up. And now what we're going to use here is my new, hot, not new, I've had this for a while. It's my hot water foam cutter so we got the little battery thing cord and the actual cutter which is a little wire piece um, ended up or plopped onto this little thing this um, wire cut this foam cutter is made by go change I think I'll put a link to that in the description in case you want to buy these or one of these two I've had it for around maybe two years now it's worked very well I use it to make my mountain on my train layout check out those videos although they are pretty bad it gives you a nice perception about what these foam cutters can do even though my commentary is terrible. So I'm just going ahead and cutting the foam along those lines. That's why it's nice to have those guidelines. So you can just go ahead and cut it and you don't have to think about where you want to cut it when you're cutting it. So, and then you do this crazy hand thing and all your desk is cleaned up. Add the tank on top there and I also add the few little figures to see if I liked the size of the base. I ended up making it a bit smaller because I thought it was too big um, for my taste and I then I ended up using that same mud mixture that I used to weather the tank, just more of it in this case, and I just dabbed that over the foam with my same middle brush I used before. Now the bricks are cut with the same foam and you just notice there's some paint on there just because I think I accidentally used it as a spray painting block one time, I don't even know. But I'm basically just making these impressions with my knife there um, until they look like bricks. They don't have to be even or anything like that. Just enough so that they look like bricks because they're going to be put into the cement later on. I'll get into that later. 
but then I cut along the bottom and we got these nice little bricks there. So pull them apart and you can make them smaller or thinner depending on how you choose. But I ended up making quite a bit of these. I think I counted it was like a thousand or something like that. I didn't use, I didn't end up using all of them. Also, one thing to note, you can also use 3D printed bricks from if you have a 3D printer, as I don't, I just made them out of foam. It's the easiest way I found. And then what I'm doing now is adding some drywall compound. This stuff goes on pink, dries white, and you can buy it at a hardware store. And then I'm just plopping some of those foam bricks into that wet drywall compound and sprinkling some dirt on it to simulate rubble. Now what I also ended up doing was adding a little bit of soldering wire, solder, lead solder, the little things you use whenever you melt soldering iron stuff. You know if you're, you know what I'm talking about, most likely. And if you don't, then, um, sorry. Um, you can also use little wires just to simulate damage, rebar wire, various things like that. And I also had some leftover rebar cage from my Lancia diorama. There will be a link in the top right hand corner right now. And then I began to prime the model with some nice dark brown surface primer. I didn't end up priming the actual foam bricks. I just ended up priming mainly the whole diorama, just that it was all nice and nicely coated. And that's a nice base coat to work with. Note that you're also going to want to use dark brown surface primer because it'll leave the surface. It's a nice top bottom layer before you start weathering. Um, just so that you have a nice, like a real, a good paint job has a nice bottom layer and a nice top layer. And now what I did after that was I took a lighter brown. Um, I'm not sure what exactly what color it is. This little Modern Master paint can. You can buy whatever you want to do this. But it's just a nice light brown I found in my paint stash. The label is lip, ripped off, that's why I can't tell you what paint color it actually is. And then I just put that over the model, then I ended up painting the bricks. You can choose whatever color you want. As I'm modeling something, I like the Middle Eastern area. I know these tanks actually weren't in the Middle East, I'm just doing whatever I thought looked good. But I'm modeling some more cement bricks, and what I, the paint color I used for that was some dark gall gray, I believe that's what it was. It's a nice bluish dark gray from the air. Vallejo paint series, you can look that up. I ended up doing a little bit of variety in there. Some bricks I painted different than others. And now here is the finished model. I ended up painting the sides black. Ended up coming really, coming out really well in my opinion. Very happy with it. Got that nice tank in there. Overall, I had a really a lot of fun building this kit. Flashes were not a problem. That's flash whenever you take it off in the sprue. And then decals went on good, except for those big numbering ones. I think that was just my problem, though. That didn't add enough decal solid on them. Uh, added a little gloss coat on there, just to make sure everything was sealed. Painted the figures, plopped them in. I added a little more dirt on the diorama, and then everything was good. Hope you have enjoyed watching this video. Like, subscribe, and share. Hit that like button if you want, obviously. And I'll talk to you again soon. Overall, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Peace out, bro. <laughs>